Uh, my name is Steve Bennett with Special Mix Maryland. I'm the Senior Director of Competition overseeing Summer Games and uh, would also like to recognize our softball uh, individuals. Uh, Alan McCauley, who is the Competition Director. Unfortunately, he is not feeling well and is unable to join us this evening. Um, we also have Rick McCauley, who is the Assistant Competition Director. Um, has been with us for many years as well. And then Jim Chin, who is our umpire in chief, and he will be addressing some of the sports specific slides to this evening. I will be handling some of the administrative slides and general uh, information as we go through. So we also have Anna Albert, who is our cheerleading director, and many other hats, and she is helping us tonight. Also on the phone, we have Mike Sarnowski, um, Special Olympic staff, and Melissa Anger. Uh, from Special Olympics staff as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. Again, we'll just go through some of the basics here. Um, again, I want to welcome everyone for joining us this evening. We appreciate you taking time out of your schedule this evening uh, so that we can give you some last minute information regarding softball and other uh, general information. We'll talk about the competition for the teams, individual skills, some schedules. Uh, we'll go over some maps so you familiarize yourself with the, with the layout of the Towson area. Like I said, we'll have Jim talk about some specific rules, the competition format. Then again, uh, we'll hit some basic information with transportation off-site, uh, some general updates, and then we'll have questions and comments in the end. Um, I will uh, attempt to uh, let you know how you can ask a question. Um, if you see in your panel, there is a hand that you can uh, hit that. Uh, we will be able to notice that that means you are uh, wanting to ask a question. There's also a text box that you can uh, type in a question. And if it is a question that is relevant for everyone's concern, uh, we can share that question as well as the answer for all. And once we get to certain places uh, throughout um, uh, the webinar this evening, uh, we will stop and pause and address some of your questions as we move forward. So we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. Again, just some basic information. Uh, as with Special Olympics, we follow the National Governing Body rule, which is the American Softball Association of America, also now currently being used as U.S. softball. Um, that's where we get our rules. And again, here's just some basic information. We're looking about 18 teams and around 20 um, athletes participating in individual skills. And just a reminder, um, athletes can only be on one team. Um, and if they're in skills, that's the only competition they can be. You can't be in skills and on a team as well. Um, uh, for spectators, just general, um, the same, same layouts as last year. Um, so we do encourage you to bring some long chair, lawn chairs. Um, as the fields off-site do not have uh, bleachers. So just a reminder to any family, um, or spectators and fans that are coming to root on your teams. Um, we, do, we will have a rules committee which comprises of Alan McCauley, again, our competition director, Jim Chin, the umpire in chief, uh, Bev, who has again been with us for many years, uh, certified umpire, and then at the first coaches meeting on Friday, we'll determine um, who the coach and athlete, and as well as the alternates that will be on that rules committee to decide and make rulings on any protests that are filed um, for softball. Next. Okay, again, we'll just go through some basic schedules. Um, here's the dates. Hopefully everyone's aware that the competition will be on June 10th and June 11th uh, for the teams, and also on June 10th only for individual skills. Everything is obviously slow, pot, slow pitch competition for traditional and unified. Um, we are working on the final divisions. We're hoping to get those out no later than Monday, June 5th. Um, and again, just the basic time of the competitions, Saturday 8 to 5. Um, within that time frame, we will also have individual skills, um, which will include their lunch break, um, re-division and go into finals, and then uh, uh, do the award ceremonies for the individual skills athletes. Um, don't forget, we have the evening game on Saturday at Towson University in the stadium. 
uh, followed by the Home Run Derby. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, and then on Sunday, same thing, we'll have the team competition, both unified and traditional, um, from 8 to 3. Again, the times are approximate. And a reminder of the location, same as last year, the practice field by the varsity softball field is what we'll do individual skills. Varsity uh, softball stadium on campus at Towson will host a certain number of games, and then most team competition will be conducted at Cockeysville Middle School right down the road. Okay? Just some basic information, this doesn't pertain to everyone, but just so you're aware, between 2 and 6 on Thursday, we'll have the heads of delegation. Uh, we'll have everyone registered. That's where they'll pick up their packets and be able to uh, disseminate information out to you guys as coaches. And then we'll also have a follow-up meeting at that time from 6 to 8. Again, that will be for the heads of delegation only. And we will go through some certain, and up, uh, certain information and updates uh, that we can, uh, that I'm sure they will share with all of you guys and gals. Next. Again, just some basic information here um, so that everyone's aware of what's going on throughout the weekend. Uh, this is Friday. Um, I do want to note at the top of the slide, uh, down if you look in the grid, we say coaches meetings, blah, 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 um, stadium, site of campus, exact location to be determined. But please note that the softball coaches meeting on Friday will be conducted in the CQ Arena. It's the same place opening ceremony takes place. That will be in the third floor in the Tiger Club room from 6 to 6.30. So that has been determined. Um, but a few highlights here. Again, we're uh, excited to host our cheerleading competition at Towson Center on Friday from 10 to 3. Um, important note, lunch. That's only for the cheerleading delegates. Um, everyone else is on their own for lunch. Again, this is just for the cheerleading competitors. Uh, family hospitality will be open from 12.30 to 3.30 uh, at the Towson Center. Dinner will be at the Susquehanna Dining Hall, same place as in the past. Um, and, a, and a note there, we also are having a dance demonstration in the Potomac Room, which is located right beside the Susquehanna Dining Hall. If you have a chance, uh, stop in there. And these are Special Olympics athletes and their peers uh, that are uh, providing a dance demonstration. It's a nice activity and something to go support the individuals who are in that. Um, again, we talked about the coaches meeting. Staging for the parade of athletes uh, will take place in lot 20 from 6.30 to 7.15. And right before that, we will have activities for athletes and everyone in lot 20 at the CQ Arena during the block party. And that's also where merchandise will be sold. Uh, the opening ceremony and torch lighting will all take place in the CQ Arena. And then um, immediately following, we will load the buses to get everyone back to their housing facilities. An important note for everyone to make sure you listen and help with your other delegation members. Uh, after the opening ceremony has concluded, please stay in your seats until your delegation or your area county program has been called for dismissal. Uh, we're going to do that in a very organized fashion, hopefully with your help to get everybody back um, in time uh, and in a timely manner uh, back to get a good night's sleep and ready for Saturday's competition. And one note I, I didn't mention earlier, but just so you know, we will send out these slides to everyone um, who's on the webinar. So don't frantically take notes on everything, but because uh, you will receive this slide deck for your information purposes. So moving on to Saturday, uh, breakfast will be available in the Susquehanna Dining Hall from 6 to about 8.15. Um, the buses will begin um, heading out to those of you who have games in Cockeysville at 7 a.m. Uh, the competition, again, just for basic information, we have tr uh, athletics for track and field, bocce, softball, and swimming with their locations there. Uh, there is one centralized family hospitality area. Um, this year, which will be on Towson University campus in Lot 21 by the Towson Center. We're looking at the possibilities uh, based on availability for other off-site locations, but at this point, that's the one we are promoting. Um, healthy athletes will be located at the Towson Center as well. Merchandise on Saturday will move from the CQ Arena parking lot to Lot 21 at the Towson Center. And then the important note, dinner. On Saturday, 
will not be in the Susquehanna Dining Hall. So please do not go to the Susquehanna Dining Hall for dinner. We are lucky enough where our development team has created a partnership with Famous Dave's. Uh, they are providing the dinner on Saturday night in Lot 21 at Towson Center. So please make a note of that. Um, then we'll have our head of delegation meeting later on uh, following dinner. And then again, as we mentioned earlier, the home run derby and the softball evening games there on campus. The other important note that all the athletes we know are, are excited to hear is the dance theme this year is the 70s era, which I will define a little bit later in the webinar. Uh, that again will be outside following the dinner um, in Lot 21 at the Towson Center. Uh, and then again, we will have the family reception, which is in the CQ Arena. That again, just a reminder, that's only for family members. Um, athletes, partners, etc., should be um, with their peers enjoying the festivities in Olympic Park and during the dance. Okay, next. And then just moving on to Sunday, same kind of schedule. Buses will head out to Cockeysville at 7. See your breakfast time frames. And again, the family hospitality on campus. Go over a couple venue maps, again, just for everyone's purposes, so you're familiar. If you're not playing, you'll know where to go support your other uh, teammates, athletes, and partners, and coaches. Um, just a, a, a couple important things here to point out. If you go uh, the second, uh, on the right-hand side, um, the second little box there, this is our um, Towers, Glen, or Glen Towers C and D is where we'll be housed. And where the cursor is now, that's the Douglas uh, and Towson run apartments. So uh, kind of split between two housing facilities. Um, and again, those of you who aren't familiar, down at the bottom, um, we talk, point out the Towson Center. That's where cheerleading and some other activities. One I would like to point out is the YAP, Y-A-P demonstration, an open house. That is the Young Athletes Program, which will be from 10 to 1 on Saturday, so we encourage anyone who has some time to come check that out. Again, those are for athletes between the ages of two and six who um, are learning um, motor skills, and um, I think actually it's two to seven uh, age group, and developing the skills that they can start training as they get closer to age, and uh, hopefully join us uh, for the remainder while they're here in Maryland and join Special Olympics. Um, Again, that lot 21, again, is where the family hospitality will be, as well as if you know anybody who's coming to volunteer, that is where volunteer registration will be. Um, the other important thing to point out here is, thank you, Anna, you're right ahead of me. Um, the parking for volunteers, families, and spectators will be in lot 13 and 14, and that's where everyone will be parking, and we will have shuttles, which we'll talk about a little bit, that will be doing campus loops so everybody can get to where their destination is in a timely manner. So um, we'll go ahead and move on from that. Again, just the basic layouts. This is the Towson University and the Towson uh, Varsity Stadium. And right beside that, as you can see, is where the individual skills competition will take place. We will have a tent there for um, athletes for uh, lunch distribution and weather depending if they need some shade, some rest, and um, we'll also have a medical tent there available as well. And this is the layout at Cockeysville off-site for softball team competition. You can see the fields uh, noted there on the slide. We will also have a tent there for operations and then the lunch area and getting ready for awards, et cetera. We also have some uh, Port portable restrooms available as needed there. And there is the address, so if you have to uh, look at the slide to get the address, we have it for you. And then you again, you'll have that shortly. <clears throat> and as you can see on that slide, again, as we said, there are no bleachers, so uh, remind families to bring their lawn chairs so that they can be comfortable at, at Cockeysville offsite. Okay, next. Okay, um, 
my screen froze, so I apologize. I am now following along. Um, this, uh, this, oh, no, there we go. Um, this is a basic layout for Cockeysville Middle School, so that you um, just get a, a basic uh, general idea of the area. And again, just a reminder: individual skills will be conducted on site, um, and there will be a limited amount of teams that will be able to participate um, at Towson University in the stadium. Okay, next. Uh, this also talks about uh, Loyola Blakefield and kind of gives you different pointers here of where things are. So up in the far left corner, um, you'll see Loyola Blakefield. For those of you who want to go support your uh, fellow teammates at the swimming competition, that's where that location is. And then we have the Towson Run Apartments uh, for housing, the Glen Towers, and the Towson Stadium as a couple uh, interested uh, pointers there. Again, this is just a, a helpful reminder for those that are going to swimming. Um, do not park um, at the facility. We will have shuttles running constantly out to Loyola and back to campus. So if you uh, are able to go out there and support any of your swimmer athletes, um, please use a shuttle that you can grab at campus um, at the University Union garage. Okay, now we'll go to some competition information. And at this time, um, Jim Chin, if you're available, I will go ahead and turn this over to you. Okay, I don't, I, for some reason, I don't see Jim signed in at this point. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit some of this. Um, unless Anna, is that you want me to do that, or you, are you comfortable with that? I'm comfortable with this. I definitely okay, won't read slide. Yep, I won't read slide for slide, but we'll definitely get the gist. Okay, um, great. Your competition, your competition and, uh, format. Uh, actually, Anna, before you start, just so that folks know, um, uh, we certainly do want your questions. But if you ask a question that, uh, since apparently Jim's not able to join us, um, that uh, we can't answer, we'll. Uh, uh, track it down and have to get back to you uh, sometime after the uh, the session tonight. But we will strive to get an answer for every question that we have. Thank you, Mike. Alrighty, thank you, gentlemen. Team competition, as in general format, will be the round robin. Um, it will be by single elimination or only a round robin format in the case of a two-team division. Should you have two teams that become tied following the preliminary competition round, you'll see the uh, following tiebreaker scenario that will be used. First, it will be head-to-head -head competition results. Then, then that would then move into total runs scored or total runs allowed differential. Total runs allowed and then final would be the coin flip. Your meddling round will conclude on Sunday, June the 11th, with teams competing in semifinal games, followed by the gold medal and bronze medal, if necessary. A few pointers um, for the competition, uh, some special rules of emphasis. Please, no profanity or abusive language at any time. Unfortunately, I've heard a little bit of this myself from the spectator side, so we ask you to please, um, parents, coaches, everyone, to um, mind their manners in that respect. The five-run maximum inning rule will not be in effect or applied. All batters will start with a 0-0 count. There will be no courtesy foul. Second foul ball will be considered a strikeout. Coaches, please remember that you are required to submit your lineup card 10 minutes prior to the scheduled start of the game. There will be a few copies of the lineup cards available um, at the control center, but it is important that you have them with you. The lineup cards must be submitted for all games. Important that each team reports to their competitive fields 15 minutes prior to the scheduled start of each game. 
If a team is not at the field and ready to play 10 minutes after the scheduled start, the game unfortunately will be forfeited. Coaches, please remember that you are required to check in with the softball control center to um, confirm if there are any revisions to the game schedule. That is... The... Yes, sir? I am online. Okay, okay yeah, Jim. Jim you... Sorry you about that. You're welcome to take it from here, sir. <laughs> Okay, um, most of you have been doing this for a while, like I have, um, and most of you know the rules. Um, where did you leave off, Anna? I left off at them being reporting to the field 15 minutes prior to their scheduled start, or and if they're not there by 10 minutes thereafter, they will be forfeited. Okay. Um, the game time is not more than 15 minutes. You finish the inning, uh, and then if there's a tie, um, you play until the tie is broken. Okay, so next page. Um, you have a commitment line, which is 20 feet from the uh, second home plate, uh, runners cannot be tagged out. If the runner's foot has to be completely over the line, one foot has to be completely over the line, uh, once his foot is over the line, then he's committed to home plate. If he goes back to third base, after he crosses the commitment line, the uh, runner is out. Uh, substitutions is uh, per ASA rule. Um, you've got one substitution per inning. Next page. Uh, courtesy runner. I'm sorry, you got one courtesy runner per inning, not substitution. Uh, unified, uh, only an athlete may courtesy run for an athlete. And a partner for a partner. Tiebreaker at the top of the eighth inning. Um, the person who's supposed to bat last in that inning goes to second base. This is called the international tiebreaker rule. Um, coach's assistance to a runner. Uh, if the umpire sees it, that's an automatic out. And uh, the ball is dead. Run rule is 15 and 12 after 4 and 5. Appeal plays. They have to be made before the next pitch. Once a pitch has been thrown or a play has been made, then there can be no appeal. Home run rule. Two over the fence home runs. Uh, per team, if any in excess, it's uh, out. The dead ball in the out. Meaningful involvement. Uh, most coaches know what this means. If a player dominates, then we give a warning, and after that, then uh, we'll have to decide what violation. Well, what. Uh, what the penalty is going to be. It could be up to a forfeiture of the game. Next. Bats. Um, bats have to be approved by the umpires and they will be checking each game. Uh, all umpires will have a copy of the illegal non-approved bat list and there is a you, certain players uh, are allowed to use a little league bat, but they still have to meet the specifications for an ASA bat. Um, everybody knows what ball we're using it is the Oxford Yellow Ball 52 core 300 pound test. Next. 
uniforms. Um, all uniforms have to be properly worn. They're light in color, trim and style. They have to have a number on the back. Exposed jewelry. We're going to go to the no jewelry rule other than uh, medical bracelets and things that have to be worn. Okay, next. Oh, catchers must have a uh, helmet with a throat guard, uh, chest protectors and chin guards are recommended but not uh, not required. Okay, next. This is for the Home Run Derby. Um, I'll let Steve go through that, I guess, because it doesn't really involve us. But you can read it and see what uh, what the requirements are. Yeah, basically we're just looking for one, cont one contestant from each team. So as, as you guys are the coaches, um, just uh, think about who you would like to um, submit as far as the one participant from the team. And then you can either, uh, hopefully we'll have our, our uh, uh, pitcher machine, the pitching machine, or you can have your yourself or uh, your athlete um, can determine who they want to pitch for them. Um, again, we you can read this for yourselves. We'll have seven pitches per player, uh, basically the same as last year. And then we, are, uh, we do have some prizes for um, tickets to the Oriole games. And um, so it's a great thing. So we hope that if we get everyone's involvement. And if you could, um, again, make sure you have um, your individual selected and have that ready for Alan and the crew um, at the head coaches meeting on Friday. We'll just move into, again, just some uh, basic information. Um, we talked about the, the dinners. Uh, again, the, lock, the block party on Friday is in Lot 20 at the CQ Arena. Then that will be mo moved over, and we'll call that Olympic Park on Saturday in Lot 21 at the Towson Center. Uh, again, we'll have some great activities there, some food vendors, some clinics, some demonstrations, some movies, I mean some music, and some art activities, et cetera. So we right, uh, hit on staging for the opening ceremony around 6.30. And then uh, we'll, we will talk to individuals and uh, disseminate information if we have inclement uh, weather. But if that does occur, we'll move every, everything into the Towson Center. and We're working out those details at this point. Um, if you have anyone who you would like to nominate to your head of delegation for the parade to carry in the banner from your area or county program, just make sure you submit that to your head of delegate, your head delegate, and they will uh, take that into consideration. And um, if you have any, um, again, if you, if you have any individuals who have mobility challenges, again, make sure you let that be known to your head delegate so they can submit that so that we have adequate seating for the opening ceremony for those individuals. Next. Transportation, again, basically uh, wanted to talk about this a little bit further as we have added a few loops that will go on campus um, from lot 20 or 13 and 14 where everyone's parking down to lot 21, the Towson Center. They will make stops at uh, the end of the road for bocce um, and for um, athletics as well as uh, softball on campus. And again, those shuttles will be running on Friday for those of you uh, going to uh, watch and support the cheerleading competition. Um, those uh, shuttle runs will also take everyone back to their housing facilities. And then the loop service will go again uh, to make sure everyone gets to dinner on Friday, then back up for opening ceremony and the block party. Um, and that will take us to the CQ Arena in Lot 20. And again, like we talked about, as as we dismiss from the opening ceremony on Friday evening, we will board the buses that will be staged in Lot 20 to get everyone back to their uh, dormitory housing. Okay, at this time we do have um, one question. Jim, this is a question for you. 
Um, principle of meaningful play question. Ground ball hit to third base, who flips the ball to the pitcher, who then fires the ball to first in time for out. Is that okay or not okay? Okay. Say that one more time. Sure. Yeah, it was basically if, if the ground ball is hit to third base and they're relaying it, uh, maybe they don't have enough a strong enough arm to get it all the way to first. They use the pitcher as a cutoff from first to third, I mean from third to first, and the pitcher relays That's it fine. to first. That is fine. Yeah. Thank you for this that question. Prevent, this is to prevent somebody from, say, the – Third base is, you know, getting ready to catch the ball, a fly ball, or a pop-up, and shortstop cut them off. Okay, you know, not allowing the uh, third baseman to make the play. If the third baseman makes the play, that's fine. But we don't want somebody to take the play away from somebody else. Well said, Jim. I appreciate that. And again, thank you for that question. Um, here again, just the basic transportation loops. Um, they'll, they will pick up from the dormitories to get everyone to breakfast. Um, then they'll continue those loops starting at 7 to go out to Cockeysville and Loyola for the off-site venues. Um, and then those shuttles will continuously run. The one thing is if competition does run late, um, don't worry about it. Uh, the shuttle systems will not stop running at a designated time. They will make sure that everyone gets back from all of the venues um, back to campus. Um, so don't panic if we do run in a little bit late there. Um, but again, these shuttles be running uh, back and forth all day from off-site and then uh, throughout the day on campus in the loop there. Uh, basic same thing on Sunday. Um, not much of a difference there whatsoever, but again, just remind anybody who's coming to be spectators, um, uh, on site, especially to parking lots 13 and 14. If they're going straight out to Cockeysville, that's fine. But if they're coming to uh, watch the uh, on on campus competition or the individual skills, they need to park in lots 13 and 14 and be shuttled up to lot 20 area um, so that they can go to the softball venue on site. There will be some very limited parking on Sunday. Uh, by the CQ Arena, but again, we're encouraging everyone to park in lots 13 and 14. And basically, from a from a uh, parking perspective, if you're not in between two white lines, you shouldn't be parking there. Uh, we did have a lot of people making their own parking places last year, especially going up the hill uh, leading towards lot 20 at the CQ Arena. Uh, very good possibility those individuals we will be towed this year. So please make a note of that and help us disseminate that information. If you're not in between two white lines, don't park there. Uh, one additional comment I'd like to stress here um, is all the shuttles on campus that are provided for the summer games do have wheelchair lifts and they are operational. If there is a specific need for an individual ride, kind of like a taxi ride, um, note the number here, the 410-704-RIDE or 410-704-7433. Um, that is a service uh, that's provided through Towson University. Um, but please make a note, if you're going to use that, we don't anticipate much, if any, use of that. But if, if you do find yourself in need, please make note that you need to give 20 minutes advance of the pickup time, not when you need to get somewhere but 20 minutes before they will come to pick you up. But again, it's just an additional service that is provided from Towson, and we appreciate uh, their support in that effort. Um, again, we, we talked about the opening ceremony, but I really can't stress that enough. In order to help get everyone back to their facilities um, and, and get to the dormitories, just please help us keep everyone seated until your uh, delegation is called. Um, we will have some music playing out in the uh, parking lot as people are boarding, and we will have some entertainment uh, in the CQ arena as people are waiting to be dismissed. Okay, we do have a question here. All right, Jim. Second foul ball rule. Is it really a second foul ball, or is it a foul ball when there are two strikes 
or fouled already. So another it's foul, a foul ball. ball after after a second strike is an out. Thank you. Thank you for that question again. Just to re uh, reemphasize that if you have two strikes and you foul, that's an out. Correct, Jim? Say that again. Sorry. If you have two strikes and you foul the ball, that's an out. Correct. That is an out. Okay. Thank you for the clarification, Jim. Okay, summer games uh, changes and some updates. Again, we talked about it briefly, but the Olympic Park um, and Block Party and Victory Dance. The Olympic Park and, Vic and Victory Dance will be in Lot 21 on Saturday evening. Um, we'll have, again, some activities there. Um, again, I talked about the dance demo in the Potomac Room during dinner on Friday. Again, here we talked about, as promised, uh, further details uh, regarding the theme of the dance. Um, the 70s era is basically a, a disco and uh, flower power kind of hippie outfit. So we expect some great, uh, great costumes and some fun to be had during the dance. Again, the dance will be outside in lot 21 at the Towson Center. And again, just to reemphasize the Young Athletes Program and at Open House, I'm at the Towson Center between 10 and 1 on Saturday. Family services, um, again, we're hoping to have um, off-site um, hospitality uh, for the families, but at this point we're only confirming that we have the one centralized location at Towson University in Lot 21. Talked about the family reception. Uh, there will be some information being sent out to the families. We call that the family facts uh, regarding summer games. Our family committees put that information together and be sending that out around June, uh, June 5th. And then uh, merchandise again. Uh, we we uh, will have that at the block party in Lot 20 on Friday, and then we'll move that up to Lot 21 at the Towson Center on Saturday. And we are looking at the possibility also to have the merchandise sales at Cockeysville for softball and Loyola for swimming. Meals, um, again, that's for basically anybody who's a, an officially registered delegation member. Um, again, no lunch on Friday. That's just for cheerleading. And then uh, we'll start with dinner on Friday in the Susquehanna Dining Hall, breakfast, uh, lunch and dinner on Saturday. Reminder, lot 21 for di uh, dinner on Saturday from Famous Dave's. Saturday, do not go to the Susquehanna Dining Hall. You will not be fed. Um, we will have some information here. Um, these prices are for individuals who aren't officially registered delegation members. These are approximate prices. Um, $8 for breakfast, 8 for lunch. Um, 11 for dinner, but again, we're working with the vendors. They're determining their prices, so this is just a ballpark area on those prices. Uh, the control center, as in years past, will be located at the Uni United Stadium in the Minigan Room. Um, primarily, that's for head heads of delegation and other emergencies uh, where we have our operations. So if you have a question, um, that's not related to softball um, or you have a concern, um, you can work through your head delegate and they can notify us. Um, again, one of the other changes uh, is we are in different housing facilities, Tower C and D that were indicated on the map earlier, as well as Towson Run, which we've been in the past, and then another new one this year is Douglas. Um, every head of delegate has received every head of delegation, excuse me, has received information regarding housing um, from our uh, coordinator and manager uh, for summer games, Jane Dunn. So if you haven't received that information, uh, just reach out to your uh, head of delegation. They'll provide that information for you. Um, the the other thing there is reminders that when you check out on Sunday, make sure that you return your keys. Um, at the front desk upon checkout. Um, that's just a reminder. There are potentially charges, et cetera, for lost 
or non-returned keys, and we don't want anyone to have to pay for that out of their pocket, so just make sure all keys are turned in on Sunday morning upon checkout. As just a reminder, um, if we go back one, again, these slides will be sent out, but um, as we continue to post things and get our name out there and show all the great things that are happening during summer games, here are a few avenues that we're suggesting and promoting um, through Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, um, and other, other means. So again, this, this gives you that information and we'll send that out with the slides. So with that, I will open it up for any further questions. A reminder, you can type it into the text box as we have received a few. Or you can indicate you have a question by hitting the hand. Um, and it looks like we have one. George, go ahead. Yeah, yeah this is George Fryman with Anne Arundel. Um, is the text information, um, you know, the phone number that we can uh, sign into to get text messages about weather related uh, incidents or you know things being canceled is that going to be available again yeah good question George and we will make sure to include that in the slide with the Nixel information if you're already signed up as long as you didn't sign like unsubscribe to it you'll still get them I probably did unsubscribe as soon as it was over last year <laughs> <laughs> no, great question we should have added that in the slide so we'll make sure we add it in uh, before we send these slides out. Thank you, George. All right, thanks. I don't see any other questions at this time. Um, Jim, do you have anything else you would like to add from a rules perspective or any clarifications? No, but I think if, uh, if the coaches have any questions, we can bring them up at the meeting on uh, uh, Saturday or Friday night. Yep, there you go. Um, again, I will, uh, Mike, any any other clarifications before we thank everyone? No, other than a big thank you to everyone for all the work you've done this season, getting your athletes ready. Uh, we're looking forward to a, uh, uh, a great weekend in a week and a half. And uh, again, thank you all and thank you for spending some time tonight. I, again, I just echo those uh, comments from Mike. Um, great competition leading up. Saw some really uh, good games at the qualifiers. And um, again, like Mike said, we appreciate all the um, support from ASA or USA Softball, um, our committee with our volunteers, with Alan, Rick, Anna, and others, um, and Jim taking the lead with the officials. And again, of course, all of you guys with the commitment to the athletes and partners and putting in the long hours and efforts to prepare everyone so that we can showcase the skills at a, at a major event like our summer games. So again, thank you all for being here tonight. Hopefully it was informational and you took something away tonight. And we look forward to seeing everyone at summer games. So have a great evening. <laughs>